Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are checking out Inkscape, specifically Inkscape 1.2 beta, which was just released. There's actually quite a few nice things to check out in this beta. Now again, beta, so do expect things to be a little bit problematic, report any bugs you encounter and all that stuff, but without further ado, let us jump in. So here you can see Inkscape 1.2 beta, new splash screen uh, being shown right there, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is Inkscape. Now if you've never heard of Inkscape before in the past, this is a vector graphics space application. It is free and open source. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Uh, and if you don't know what vector graphics are all about, basically you're drawing with shapes. This entire car is drawn using math instead of pixels. So if you're using something, a raster graphics application such as Photoshop, uh, you're generally working with pixel by pixel basis. In this case, you're working with layered shapes. So let's look at the icon right here on the hood of the car. You can see here, we can actually stretch it in various different directions. Now, the advantage of uh, working with vector graphics as opposed to uh, raster graphics is it enables you to create resolution-independent images. But you also get a very uh, vectory look from your artwork. It, it's a trade-off for sure. I, I've long been a fan of vector graphics in general, and Inkscape is kind of the gold standard of free and open source vector graphics applications. So uh, what is new in this release? Well, one of the things that I immediately like is the new palette option. So you see down here your color palette. So if you're selecting something uh, and you're changing the color of said thing, like so. Well, this palette now has a lot of options available. Come down here, click the little hamburger icon right there. You have the ability to preview and switch through a number of different palettes. We're going to go through the Inkscape default palette. So there you see right there. But we have a number of other options as well. We can come down here and we can configure this guy. And now we can see is I can actually change the size of my palette items. I can also say, so if they were smaller and they didn't fit on the screen, I could say, okay, stretch this to fill the available space. That's actually pretty nice. So we can also come down here, basically change the size of them up, but we can also go ahead and have multiple rows to fit all of our various different palette items in there. So if you're working with colored palettes, these new configuration options are quite nice. Uh, we've got a number of other improvements across the board. Uh, one thing that they have done is the uh, all of the snapping and alignment stuff has been consolidated into a single panel like you see right here. Uh, that is definitely a nice change. Another area that got a lot of love is in fill and stroke. Uh, which sounds perverted. You're going to see over here, we've got a couple of different options. So for example, we can do a uh, stroke style. If we were dealing with a line, we now have the ability to specify uh, arrowheads for each end. We can create our own custom uh, markers if we so wish so. Another thing that you will notice down here is if we go back to stroke, gradients are back. So we now have a gradient editor. So I can switch to a gradient draw right here. You see we can have multiple different uh, stops on the editor. So I got inline editing right here. I could go ahead and create a new entry point. So you see we got now a third color there. So first one, we could go ahead and make it say red. The second one, go ahead and make it green. And the third one and go ahead and make it blue. And there is our, uh, let's up the opacity. We're doing a gradient fill on a line. So it's a very strange result that we were getting there. But as you see, gradient tools are now back in Inkscape. Uh, there is a bunch more. We're actually going to go and switch over to the uh, documentation right now instead, and it'll kind of highlight some of the new 1.2 features. The thing, again, that I really like is the new palette customizability. Now, one thing I very much did not like was the way this ran on my M1 MacBook Pro, which is to say very, very, very poorly. So if you're running an M1 Mac, don't be surprised that it was, I would call it unusable, if I'm honest. It was about an order of 10 times slower than what I experienced on Windows. The cool thing here is it is available on multiple different platforms. So if you want to go ahead and check out Inkscape, it is available at inkscape.org. Uh, you can download uh, the current version, so the 1.1.2 uh, for or Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. But what you're probably more interested in is the 1.2 beta. I will have this linked down below. Uh, again, this is a beta. So if you run into any problems, please do share it with them so they can try to improve things. It's just the first release in like basically a year. Uh, so it's been almost a year since 1.1 uh, was released. So uh, there's a lot of performance tweaks, new features, and so on in here. Uh, so do be aware of that. So now we're going to do a quick look at some of those new features. These are the work in pro uh, process release notes for the 1.2 release. And there is a lot to take in. Now we're not going to go through all all of it because uh, that would take a very long time. Uh, I highlighted some of the things I like the most. I do like the new color palette, but as you can see, we'll just do the highlights here. 
Uh, Inkscape documents can now hold multiple pages, which are handled by the page tool, uh, editable markers and dash patterns, uh, layers and objects dialogues were merged together on canvas uh, alignment snapping, uh, selectable object origin for numerical scaling and moving. So you can actually, uh, if you're working with multiple objects, uh, let me just grab multiple objects like so, you can actually grab a corner and pick the axis to work from and then move things numerically. That's definitely a nice precision tool change that they've got there. Uh, another thing that I kind of briefly mentioned on in the demo was that alignment options have been merged into a single dialogue. So that is all available right here. So everything is available in one spot, which is definitely a nice change. Uh, gradient editing, as we saw earlier on, all in the uh, fill tool there. So where did you go fill tool? fill in stroke. So again, you've got the ability to do gradients directly here now, uh, which is definitely nice. And the stroke, the new changes for marker editing is available uh, right there. Uh, definitely nice improvements there as well. Uh, the export dialog, let's bring it up, file, export, export, there we go, has been updated. You can now pick uh, multiple different options, uh, have a preview there, different file formats available. Etc. So we've got uh, improvements there. So you can select objects, layers, pages, and even multiple file formats to export to. Uh, snap settings were all redesigned. The SVG font editor is now easier to use. New tiling, a live path effects for easy but powerful uh, pattern making, configurable toolbar, um, continuous icon scaling, and many more new customization options. Performance improvements for many parts of the interface and different functions. Lots of UI fixies. By the way, you guys got a little typo. Um, and polish, and then many new crashes. I think they meant uh, new crash fixes and bug fixes, uh, but it, probably a lot of new crashes too. This is a beta, and this is a big release. So I highlighted this earlier on. Probably one of the things I like the best are the new palette tools, the ability to have up to five rows uh, vertically, the preview lines of the different palettes that are available, um, and the ability to stretch to fit into the available space. Definitely all nice changes. Some improvements to the, stat um, to the status bar dithering, which is a way of kind of fixing color banding between images is now improved uh, and is used for exporting of raster and uh, displaying on screen. Um, so that's definitely nice there. Uh, there is, again, that new page manager. Snapping tools have uh, been improved. Snap bar is now a snap popover. Uh, snapping preferences were globalized. Alignment and distribution snapping came up as a part of uh, a 2021 Google Summer of Code project. Uh, we've got a number of new snapping options, including alignment snapping, self-snapping, and distribution snapping. Uh, so you can see more examples of how the new snapping tools work right here of alignment and distribution snapping. The new snapping tools are definitely nice if you're doing any layout work, so definitely an improvement in that regard. Uh, we've got performance improvements, uh, and macOS has been investigated and significantly improved. Okay, I have to disagree with that one, unless it used to be even worse. Now again, new chip. I don't think M1 is fully uh, formally supported, so uh, that is to be expected, but just do be aware. If you're working on an M1 Mac, this release is pretty much not usable. I don't know what the release before, to be honest, so uh, it may be an ongoing thing. Uh, we do have the new page tool. allows you to create multiple page Inkscape documents to import as multi-page uh, PDF documents. So if you're working on, um, I don't know, a catalog or a flyer or something of multiple pages, you do have multiple page tools available now. We have changes to the selection tools here, so you can now set the origin of a selection you're going to see is going to click down here it's going to turn red and then that will be the pivot or origin point for the, so the multiple selections they grab the bottom corner and then they do the manipulation and then the manipulation will be done relative to that new selection point uh definitely a nice improvement there some improvements to the text tools uh again the gradient tool also that's just new options for it uh again the align and distribute stuff was all moved into its own dialogue instead of being scattered around places and on it goes. So we got the new gradient tools. You can see them available right here. Uh, we saw those very briefly in the demo. Again, markers uh, are available in the drop-down list. You can see right here, you can create it so you have multiple arrows across the path, uh, various different options available. And yeah, so you can sort of see what this is all about right there. I did find this functionality a little bit problematic. I was going to demonstrate it, but it didn't work the way I was particularly expecting. So uh, your mileage may vary, but definitely a cool new tool, especially if you're doing, you know, complex lines with multiple shapes on them. Um, look at those custom dash patterns that you can create yourself. Here, here, see them typing them in. The dash pattern of the line is being changed. 
Uh, and yeah, on and on it goes. New uh, SVG font editor uh, workflow has been updated. Better previews, better performance, and a higher degree of organization. Uh, swatches, the same thing as the color palette. So you can see you've got the ability to stretch them and have multiple lines of them. Uh, oh, no, not multiple lines, but you can change the tile size and you can stretch to fill them into the space, which is definitely nice. Improvements to the UI of the trace bitmap dialogue. Um, live path changes, so you can now do tiling. Um, export changes again. Uh, customization of toolbars. And yeah, so there is a lot in this release. Um, and it just kind of keeps going and going and going. But that was the highlight or the, uh, you know, 500 foot view of what is in this particular release. release. As you see from the scrolling, there is quite a bit here. So again, if you want to check it out, it's available at Inkscape.org. I will have a link to the um, specific 1.2 beta download. Do keep in mind, once again, this is a beta release. So, do, you know, do expect some bugs. Your feedback will help them. Um, it's come a long way. It's definitely a nice uh, step forward. Again, I, I would like to see some improvements on the performance side of things. That's what actually keeps me using uh, Affinity Designer uh, personally, uh, is the performance difference between the two. But a uh, lot of nice usability things here, especially in the... Uh, uh, the snapping and positioning tools, uh, definitely nice to see stuff like that. But I also, I think, again, my favorite of the things that they've added is the new palette and uh, swatch uh, controls. I, I just, it's a small change, but I actually really like how that works. So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that is Inkscape 1.2 beta. Uh, check it out. Let me know what you think. Uh, and that's it. If do you use uh, Inkscape, do you use vector graphics at all? Or if you don't use Inkscape, are you using another program such as Illustrator or Affinity Designer or something else? Let me know. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.